Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and you know the drill, it better not be good night. Welcome to another episode of HFLE for all of we. And today, this is coming to you as usual um, as an initiative of the Barbados Association of Guidance Counselors. And we have with us today one other person who's going to be sharing this wonderful subject, and she is... Mrs. Bell Alexander from the Lone Boys School on the island. <laughs> well, we know which one that is, St. Leonard's Boys, isn't it? Right? Indeed. And I am Donna Tullcox, and I'm the guidance counselor at the Graydon Seely Secondary School. Now, today's topic is honesty. And you figure that honesty is a very easy thing to talk about. Everyone knows what honesty is. Correct? They should. <laughs> right. So, I'm going to leave you with that thought, that you probably know what honesty is. So instead of defining honesty with what it is, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about honesty where we will look at what it is not. And you will be surprised on how much you will learn about honesty today from looking at what it is not. And we're also going to look at why it is important to be honest, and then we're going to look at some ways that you can keep checking yourself to promote proper skills and, and habits that reflect you in an honest way. So let's start from the beginning. Here it is. You have gone someplace and your parent asks you, why are you getting home late? Where did you go? Now you might not want to tell them where you have gone because you may get yourself into some trouble or you may get somebody else into trouble. So what you do is you actually leave out information about what happened on your journey home. <laughs> That is dishonest. And further, you may add in some information about what happened on your journey home. That too is dishonest. But sometimes you only recognize it as being dishonest if you add in information that is definitely wrong and that you know is definitely wrong. Okay? So, Dishonesty happens when you leave information out as well as when you put information in just to avoid getting into trouble. And that's one example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. sometimes persons would leave information out because it is to their benefit. Because if you give mommy all the information, the next time that you ask to go somewhere, you know full well that she will not allow you to go because wherever you went and the activities that you got up to mm -hmm. are not things that are in harmony with the values that she has taught you. And so it is a ticklish situation. We grow up and we hear persons saying honesty is the best policy. And so you do not want to come outright and tell mommy a lie. And so what you end up doing, as was mentioned, is that you say part of the story and you leave out part with the hope that individuals will fill it in for themselves and hopefully fill it in with the wrong information so that you avoid trouble and everything is smooth sailing for you after that. Right. But then what persons don't recognize is that sometimes it actually comes back to haunt you a little later. That's right. And we're going to look at that um, in its entirety a little later on as well. But another thing that happens, you know, we always tell you, if you don't, you will fail if you don't prepare, all right? So you have to prepare in order to avoid failing at something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people prepare in such a way that it's blatantly dishonest. Let's say, for example, you have a test or an exam. And in your preparing, study or studying, making sure you know the information, is a small part of your preparation. But writing the answers mm -hmm. on your 
leg or on your arm or maybe on a piece of paper or maybe if you get into the exam room beforehand sometimes putting it on something like a, the desk or the chair that kind of preparation is very dishonest mm -hmm. and the time that person stayed to do that sort of preparation they really could have done it the right way because they're sitting and they're coming up with some creative ways that they can avoid failing the examination. And more often than not, some of that time could have been spent actually learning the information so that they can do a lot better. Exactly. And sometimes people also plan with friends on what story to tell in the event that you get caught doing something. Mm -hmm. Now, all of us, you know, we you see as guidance counselors here and think that sometimes, oh, we born big so no 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 I was a child like you once as well and yes we got up to mischief and sometimes you know we could share things that would have happened to us when we were growing up mm -hmm. I remember a time when um, it was a group of us and we always used to hang out together on the weekend and one of my friends um, she wanted to go somewhere else on that Saturday afternoon so what she did was she told her mom that mm. she was over by our mm. house. Mm. And we had agreed, we had a perfect plan. It was all, yes, okay, we have you covered, all right? But then there was an emergency. And the mother called at my house to talk to her daughter. And the girl was not there. Mm. But we had a plan for that too. You know, we said, oh, um... Can't come to the phone right because she's in the bathroom, but I will let her know to call you as soon as she gets out. So the plan was that we would then call her immediately and tell her, listen, call your mother quick. We told you in the bathroom. So when we hung up and we called her, there was no answer. <laughs> so now we were on the, <laughs> we mm, were the ones seat. who were now nervous. <laughs> we were the ones who had to deal with it. And when the, the mother did not hear her daughter call back, in a relatively short amount of time, she called again. And guess what happened? My mother answered the phone. Oh. And basically, you know what happened from there? No, she wasn't here. The only buddy here is my child. So everything blew up in our face, all right? Everything. So you know that after that, we did not have our regular get-togethers for quite a while, <laughs> okay? Why? Because we had this whole thing planned out. It was very dishonest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you do a plan like that, you cannot control all the things that happen. But you know, Donna, some persons don't even set out to be dishonest, mm -hmm. but they end up doing it. Let's say, for example, you have limited funds. Right. You are a teenager and your mother gives you some money to spend. And you go and you buy an item and the individual gives you back incorrect change. Now, from calculating, you know that the money is not right. But you know what some persons do? Because they are glad for that opportunity to have a little more cash, they say nothing. And even that, it seems like it might be small, but that is being dishonest. Yes. Because the individual is going to recognize at the end of the day, whenever they are balancing their funds, that they are short. But a person can justify it and start to think, well, um, you know, maybe they know I didn't have sufficient money and this is just a sign that I'm supposed to get this cash. And you try all sorts of reasons to try to make yourself feel okay with your dishonest act. But at the end of the day, if you are not truthful in saying, well, this is incorrect change, or excuse me, but you gave me back a little too much, can you check it over? You are contributing to dishonesty. You are being dishonest. That is so true, all right? And while we are on that whole notion of receiving something that you should not have, sometimes um, somebody will describe you as being bigger, better, more intelligent, um, a perfect person for somebody else to meet. They may describe you as being 
richer than you are. They may give you a certain title that you do not deserve. And all of this to make you look like a much more suitable person for the other individual's needs at the time. So for example, let's say you have a friend who is a really good friend of yours, but they want you to be friends with somebody else who maybe is not very good at math. And they tell that other person, Matt, I have a friend that could teach you that, you know. Yes, they, you, they are so bright with that thing, they got it hands down. And they make you up to be a math expert to this other person when you're struggling with math yourself. <laughs> but they just want you all to be friends. Guess what will happen now when you meet up with that person and they truly, truly, truly want help and realize you really can't help them. So then your character is called into question. Your character <laughs> is called into question big time. So what you have to do too is also when you realize, because sometimes you may not know, but when you realize that somebody has given you a whole lot of credit and accolades for things that you do not deserve, if you tell them, no, don't do that, or if you tell the people that are expecting this expert, that, no, I'm afraid the other person made a mistake, you are being honest. Hmm. If you do not do anything to correct it, you are now being very dishonest. But Donnie, you know, a person would probably stop and ask you, so what's, what's the big thing? I mean, why is it so important that you have to be honest in every little thing? Especially when we grow up hearing people say, you know, a, a little white lie isn't anything big. Mm -hmm. But a lie is a lie. Okay. And the reason, and I'm glad you asked that, the reason why we really have to look and see what's going on with honesty is because telling the truth or making sure that the truth is told about you is a habit forming thing. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. get used to that little white lie or you get used to holding on to that change that you don't deserve, if you get used to concocting all these plans to get your own way by telling an untruth or by preparing to do something that you should not do, it becomes a habit. Mm. And habits are hard to break. Now, you're not going to be young. You're not going to be a, a, a minor forever. When you become an adult, do you want to be the type of adult that people can trust? Do you want to be the type of adult that people will say has something called integrity? Mm -hmm. That means I can trust you regardless. And if I hear something about you, I can decide that's so out of that person's character. Mm -hmm. And not only is it about building your character over time, but also you can think sometimes about the impact that telling lies can have on you. Because after a while, when you know what your morals really are and what the values that you have are, and then you start with these little lies, your conscience starts to bother you. And so it impacts on you not only physically, but it can impact on you mentally as well. So physically, if you are stressed about something that you have lied about, you may have that inability to sleep, um, you may not be eating properly, even when certain things around that situation are calling to play, you're extra nervous because you're on your toes trying to figure out what should I say and what should I not say in order to expose the, the, the lie. And so you spend so much energy on that that it can start to impact on you physically. Mm -hmm. And then mentally, you're always worried about being found out or mm -hmm. about being caught. And then you don't have that relaxed and stress-free life that you possibly could have if you had just told the truth. And so you need to be careful that even if you think that you got away with it for that moment, it can impact on you somewhere down the line. Donna, as you mentioned, you are young now. But when your character is called into question as you continue to age and as you continue to grow, it is going to have an impact on you in terms of how you think about yourself and the type of individual 
that you have made yourself into. Exactly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some scenarios and some things that a lot of young people and some older people as well do um, because they get caught up in the whole being dishonest and they've convinced themselves because that's another thing we have to look at too. Sometimes people convince themselves that the lies that they're telling is actually the truth. Mm -hmm. They convince themselves it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Justifying it. Justify. And they convince themselves that everybody else is doing it, so I should do it too. And again, it comes back to haunt you. It comes back to hurt you mm -hmm. at a time when you least expect it. So let's look at a couple of things. Um, have you ever done um, something where you are entering into a place where people are going to be searched? And your good friend says, I have something in my bag I don't want them to check for. They're going to check me, but they're not going to check you. Mm -hmm. You take my bag, and let me take your bag. All right? Mm -hmm. Have you all ever done that? J just admit to yourself. <laughs> OK? And sometimes what will happen is they will go through with your bag and don't get caught with anything. But now when it's your turn, you are literally left doing what? Holding the bag. And sometimes you will get into trouble for a friend because of dishonesty. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you can do to avoid situations like that. Sometimes somebody will ask you a question and you do not want to answer that question with anything close to the truth because it will embarrass you or you might get into trouble or you might get a friend into trouble. So how would you deal with something even like that? If somebody asks you a question or asks you to do something. I right? think you were sharing something earlier, Donna, where, mm -hmm. and it is one of these strategies where sometimes you can do one or two things. Sometimes you can throw it back into their court by asking them another question. So why would you think I would do that? You understand? And it kind of put a little spin on it. Or sometimes you can just be honest and tell the person, I don't think it's any of your business and I do not want to respond. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about media, Sometimes when things come up and you can tell that individuals are trying to avoid um, giving a response, they say something as simple as no comment. comment. And so as young people, rather than come out and tell a lie, a blatant lie, sometimes you can just let the individual know, I do not wish to respond. Whatever they decide from there is their business, but you are telling them clearly that you do not wish to make a comment as it relates to that. If it's a case where a friend has asked you to hold something for them because they know that they're not supposed to have it, if you really value that friendship, you need to speak out and let them know, well, why do you have it in the first place? Challenge them rather than think that you have to protect them by taking their thing and being dishonest. So there are a lot of things that you possibly can do in order to avoid being put in a situation where your integrity is compromised. Exactly. So in learning how to always approach things with honesty, start off by asking yourself two major questions so that you are true to yourself. The first question is, do I really need to be dishonest? Do I really need to do this? Do I really need to say this? And is it worth it? Hmm. What is this act of dishonesty really worth? Be true to yourself because you will answer that by saying, I don't need this. All right? So be true to yourself. Also, be true to family, friends, and other people that you have to interact with. You know why? long after you have told that lie or been dishonest and changed your ways, people remember what? The dishonesty. You want to leave them remembering the honesty. Leave them remembering that whatever comes out of your mouth, they can trust it. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to do that for yourself as well. People are depending on you to do that. We only have a few more minutes. As usual, we're out of time. 
Our time seems to go by so fast <laughs> all the time, doesn't it, it? Right? So, final words, Chanel, on honesty. Just want young people to know that as you grow, you are building character. Every little decision that you make is forming your character. So you need to be conscious of who do I want to be? How do I want persons to perceive me? And then you make a decision to suit. And then even when you think that your dishonest act is small, even when you think it doesn't really matter, sometimes I think we really need to sit down and consider, if I'm honest, what are going to be the repercussions? Because sometimes it is even smaller than you think. As young people, we think it's going to be big and the result is going to be catastrophic, if I just be honest. But most of the times, that is hardly the case. As long as you're honest, persons forgive you and they move on. Thank you so much. And honesty helps other people to show you respect. And remember, be true to yourself before you start to believe your own lies. You know, be true to yourself before you start to believe your own lies. So here is the challenge I want you to do this week. In the last seven days, last week, how many times do you recognize that you have been dishonest? And there's no such thing as a big dishonesty and a little dishonesty. Dishonesty is dishonesty, lies are lies. I want you to just look and write down all the ways that you have been dishonest, from telling a lie, to taking something you're not supposed to take, from being out when you were supposed to be in, things like that. And then ask yourself, look at each one, and ask yourself, was it really worth it? Was it really worth it? Now, you can share some of it with us here at BAGC, at email.com or leave a note with your guidance counselor in your in your um, school chat and that will be something that you can discuss really confidentially with your guidance counselor as well or maybe you could throw it out with your whole class as a discussion because it's something that a lot of us are dealing with and like I said you want to be true to yourself before you start believing your own lies and that is our episode for today. That's our class for today. I want to thank you, Ms. Chanel, for being with us again. No problem. And to you for tuning in because HFLE is for, for all, all the week. See you soon and stay safe.